Mm, a couple of questions. Where am I? And when am I? I mean, I did install that visor. I could probably have a look outside. Uh, which button is it? I think it's this one. I, I, I don't think we're meant to be here. Uh, not yet, anyway. Um, it's not even the same country. How did you get it this wrong? Right, I'll just re-enter the coordinates. Uh, I shouldn't have to reverse polarity this time. Aha! Right, next stop, Berlin. During... how about the Second World War? Right, so let's get one obvious thing out of the way. Raid World War 2 is, and always will be, a Payday 2 clone. They've previously worked on Payday 2 DLC and some ex-Overkill employees worked for Lion Game Lion, so it's no surprise that they want to go over a concept they're familiar with. Anyway, Raid World War 2 is a 4 player cult game set during the gritty warfare of World War 2. You've been assigned to put a halt on Hitler's plans and to assist in winning the war. So basically, go here, shoot people, blow up stuff and then leave. It's a pretty basic formula and it clearly shows in some of the missions of this game. On that you get a choice of three styles of missions in Raid, known as Raids, Operations and Outlaw Raids. Raids are due to basic missions of going to one location and doing a few objectives, like stealing a train, killing some people or blowing up a bridge and then you have to escape. These normally last about 10 to 20 minutes at best and currently have the biggest selections of missions available. Operations, however, are treated as a multiple level raid, with you starting off on the streets of Berlin and then you visit areas you might recognise. That's purely because the majority of these maps are from the standalone raids but have been reused. Which, while can seem lazy, the layout of the maps are altered and block off certain areas, as well as having different objectives. So it makes the maps feel like they have more life going to them and are not just a one-hit wonder compared to Payday. Also, compared to raids, operations can be done in multiple sessions, as an operation is saved in a save slot so you can reapproach it later on which I really like the idea of that because if you're doing a raid you have to do it there and then but with an operation if you're playing with friends and you need to drop out you can just pick it up later on and not lose any XP. However, the same people might not be there, so they might lose out. One other problem with the operations, when you see so many raids in this game, there's only two operations currently, which is a bit lacklustre, but I assume they're going to be adding more later on, and it would be nice to see more than just Berlin as the one hub area, depending on what kind of operation it is. However, there are two more missions available in this game, which are known as Outlaw Raids. Outlaw Raids, however, have only got one goal, and that's gold. Gold is used to upgrade your safe house or respec your character, which while it doesn't give you a lot of options to go for, the cost of the safe house upgrades and respecking your character is pretty damn high. So hunting for gold will take some time. There is however an alternative method to gold hunting which is finding loot on the map, either being in trinkets or rare occurrence of a chest of gold bullion appearing on the map. Currently however this game, like I mentioned, has only got two outlaw raids, one being the forest convoy which while has a lovely design and is the only map with proper weather effects, it's not worth attempting on very hard, as the payout of gold is really low when compared to the other mission, and the spawns are really shit, and the enemies are ridiculously hard. The other outlaw, however, is basically a blatant copy and paste of Jewelry Store from Payday 2, which, while I understand Rogue Gallery is a homage to Jewelry Store because it was made by the same person, the fact it is just a copy and paste is a really big letdown. If the area of Jewelry Store was, a, was snuck into like a bigger area of the map, or a new raid in general, it would be better, I would like the idea of that. But as you can see, most of the stores around this gallery store are blatant e extra scenery, if that makes sense, so there's nothing going into them. However, what would be nice is maybe add all the stores as their own place. So similar to four stores in Payday, you've got multiple places to loot from, and I think that would actually make it feel a bit more lively while well, compared to you can look at them, but there's nothing in there. One thing I do like about these outlaw raids, however, is the fact that they can't be chosen all the time, as you need to acquire intel which can be found on a raid or an operation at random, which is really good for replay value, as you would rather look for them and not just grind the map over and over and over again just to get enough gold to pimp out your safe house. However, again, the one downside with this is you can only carry one outlaw raid at a time, 
I'd be fine with this if it was one of each outlaw raid, as there's been times where I've had an outlaw raid for convoy and I see intel on the map, I'd love to just pick it up and I've got no one in the game with me and instead I will then beat forest convoy and then keep getting it about three more times in a row when I'm just trying to get another rogues gallery, which isn't great. It's a shame there's not more to discuss in the levels but that's pretty much it so let's just move on to the characters. In raid you go around as a group of four mercenaries who all fit their stereotypes, you've got Rivet, your typical American, Sterling, your posh boy Brit, Wolfgang, your high-pitched Nazi obsessed with gold, and Kurgan, who, bless his soul, is very good at finding valves. One thing I do have to praise when compared to Payday 2, however, is the amount of dialogue each character has. While it seems repetitive at times because they do recall very similar lines, the characters in Raid actually communicate with each other similar to how they did in Payday the Heist, which was very lacking in Payday 2. While the character designs don't look awful for the diesel engine, you do get a choice of swapping out their clothing to add a bit more customization similar to the mask in Payday, but you'll soon notice that the game is lacking any facial animations, which for a game in 2017 is pretty pathetic. It's too common for games these days to not have facial animations and it just looks lazy. Even Killing Floor suffers from this kind of issue. Also, quick side note, in the trailer, all, well, all except Kurgan were wearing bandanas across their faces. At the start, I assume this was meant for indicating it was a stealth approach. While I don't mind not seeing it in game for most of them, I honestly think Rivet looks better with the bandana compared to without. Just saying, it'd be nice to have an option. So with each character, you do have a choice of perk to go with it. Assault, Recon, Insurgency and Demolitions. Each perk comes with an ultimate disguise with the title of a war cry. I haven't had a proper time to go through all four perks properly to give you more of a detailed explanation, and there is a reason to why, which I'll have to discuss later, but for now let me give you a quick rundown of each perk. Starting off with the one I've played the most, and probably by far the best perk in the game, purely for its war cry, is Assault. All teammates will be given health back, and you decrease the use of your ammo when firing. Once you get to level 40, you can then refill your magazine, which is really fucking good you can't get around that you get more health back and you can almost get infinite ammo i can't really think of a more powerful class out of the four at the, at the moment as a health back perk compared to the rest is an obvious choice the next one is demolitions which is pretty much what you'd expect grenades shotguns and a lot of bangs as for the war cry from what i can see it will refill your grenade slot by one and each grenade you throw during your war cry is changed into a cluster grenade. However, I've experienced a major bug with this, that is, if another explosion blows it up or it's shot in the middle of the air by yourself or one of the enemy AI, the cluster bomb effect just disappears and it's a standard grenade. Also, I've heard that the perk isn't very effective if you're not the host because of desync and other issues, and that's really fucking dumb. The third one is Insurgency, and to be honest, I'm not too sure what the hell this one does. From what I understand, he's meant to be a close quarters who focuses with SMGs and melee. However, with it being a clone of Payday 2, the melee system is utter crap. And, and yeah, I just avoid it in raids because unless it's stealth, there's no bloody point. Also, for the war cry, from what I've read, it increases dodge for the player using the perk, and then everyone gets a buff in movement speed. I mean, it doesn't sound awful, but I can't find much use for it when compared to the benefits of assault or even demolitions. Unless you're moving heavy equipment, I don't really see a benefit at all. And then finally, we have recon. Recon is. Recon is just bad. The idea behind the war cry is that everyone on your team gets a damage boost and then the recon gets auto aim. It sounds alright because it would be like Overwatch with the soldier ultimate. But honestly this is the worst perk out of the four. I love the idea of the snipers and auto aim and raid. I find the snipers fun. But the war cry is just so bad. Like I said the damage is fine but the moment it takes control of your aim from a certain distance you struggle to even turn about with it, so if there's an enemy really far away which you don't care about and you want to turn around to walk somewhere else, tough luck because the game really doesn't want you to take control of your mouse anymore. And the worst bit of all is that you don't even do headshots. It's all body shots until you get to level 40, which I mean would be fine. But there's a big, big problem with raid and leveling. And this is probably my biggest gripe with this game. Leveling up by far is the most tedious and grinding part of this game. Getting from level 1 to 15 isn't too hard, but once you go from there onto 40, it takes forever. I've got about 50 hours in this game and my assault is level 30... Level 32, I believe, at the point of recording this. And my other perks are at level 15. They didn't take long. Getting assault to where it is has taken the piss. 
big problem with this game as well is the XP payout doesn't really stack up depending on your difficulty. So if you're using one of the challenge cards, they do not stack. You get the base XP times by two, which when you're playing on a higher level is really low. I've heard as well that the max XP in this game is 3 million and you're only level 40. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. I do not understand how they've done this scaling, but it is awful and it's reworking. The match XP needs redoing and the way you earn XP needs improving because so far it is awful. You've got the raids themselves, you've got the challenge cards and then you've got just the most annoying thing in the game which is dog tags. Dog tags are scattered around the map and they can be roughly from 27 to 40 onwards in the map. What this will do is not give you XP but it will add towards a final loot box at the end of the mission. Similar to what Fortnite does or some games do now. If you get all of them, you get a gold crate, which will have a higher chance loot, being clothing, gold, challenge cards, or XP. Again, a big complaint is the XP boost does not compensate for your difficulty you're playing on. So you can be playing on normal and get 700 XP. You could be playing on very hard and get 200 XP. If you're on very hard, you should be getting over a thousand XP, not 700, when the game's max XP limit is almost 3 million. Whoever designed the XP and leveling system in this game, go back and rework it. It's awful. Payday 2 was bad at launch with their XP system, but Raid is so much worse that it's unbearable. What doesn't help is the tier 4 challenges for the weapons is locked to a perk, so if you're using the SMGs for assault and you want to get to tier 4, Tough shit, you've got to play Insurgency at level 35. Good luck getting there because if you spend 50 hours doing Assault, you're going to spend another 50 doing Insurgency. Have fun with that. Oh, and the complaints about weapons doesn't stop there because like I mentioned, you get upgrades in this which are locked to perks and the way the upgrades for the weapons in this game are done are done by challenges. Nothing too out of the hard to reach. They're just basic stuff like getting kills, picking up ammo, headshots and body shots. However, some idiot decided to suggest the idea of having sniper rifles and the M1 Garand to be shoot this person from a distance. They didn't specify what distance, however Lime getting Lime for I know, how about uh, 20, 20 meters for the normal distance and then they've got to get 250 kills. Okay, doesn't seem hard. Uh, the, the maps are a bit too small for that, Lime game Lime, yeah, that's a bit too far. And what's tier 3? Oh goody, 25 meters and it doesn't stop there, 750 kills with the M1 Grand the Springfield and the Mosin Nagant. I'm so glad my game glitched with the M1 Garand. I didn't have to do that challenge because I can't think of a single bloody map I can do that on. If I have to question what map to do it on without thinking and I'm stuck not finding an answer, Lion Game Lion, you've done something wrong. Reduce the meters or put it back to hip fire. Hip fire is fine. I didn't have a problem with it. Apparently people do because there's no crosshair. I don't know. It's really stupid, but the current challenge for that is ridiculous and I hate it. And I know weapon stability isn't a f major problem for sniper rifles, but when you want to max out your entire gun, eh, you want to make it a bit easier than that. Now tier 4, I have no information on. I've been told bits and pieces from people, but I've not reached it so I'm not discussing it. I heard it's more creative than what it is now, which is really stupid because it should be creative for the entire thing. Now. I, I've moaned about this multiple times on Twitter because it really pisses me off when game devs do this. But with the weapon upgrades, they actually change the look of the gun so it looks more customised, which is a really good idea because I love weapon customisation in games. Payday, as much as I hate to say, it had really good customisation. However, they always claim that Diesel can only have one animation set. And I first saw the Sten having a front grip in the beta and I got really excited. Did Lion Game Lion overcome this, this claim? And no, when you get the attachments, the animation set does not change. So you're still holding that Sten on the magazine, which you shouldn't be anyway. And the, the, the grip is just sitting there like a dangly bit of skin. And it starts to look really bad, especially with the MG42, which P sent me the footage for. That is not excusable. How the hell do you miss this stuff in game testing? I understand that yes, there was a rumor that it's been rushed but if you're not going to have the animations for it, either take it out or give us the option to disable the look of it. 
because that is really really stupid and it looks horrible. The third person animations are terrible as it is. The first person animations aren't great either. The fact that we're still using Call of Duty Sways from Call of Duty 1 in a modern game is pathetic. You can do better than that, it's 2017. If Killing Floor can do it, so can you. Even if it's not motion captured, you can still animate better than that. But my god, the, the fact there's so much wrong with this game hurts my mind. And I've played over 50 hours of it because I find it fun. I really enjoy PvE games and I just find it quite refreshing to not be filled up with DLC microtransactions and developers fucking lying to us. Lion Game Lion, you have a lot to live up to if you want to be a a, a, a clone of Payday 2, a game which is stupidly successful. You can't just make the base game and expect people to pay almost double the price of Payday 2. You can buy Payday 2, I think it's about 60 quid now for everything with the DLC, and you're charging 30, 40 pounds for Raid. Raid is a mess. I've heard complaints about the console version with the frame rate, that's another story. But the fact there's so little in this game and you're charging more. I understand that could be Starbreeze, but you should have a say in this as well. You're the developers of the game, you're gonna suffer if you don't do anything. So honestly, no, I don't suggest Raid World War 2, not in the slightest at this point. Yes, we're getting a Halloween update, yes, we've just had a shotgun added and we've had a new grenade which is supposedly coming but there's nothing in this game which redeems the price so honestly i still play it i will still stream it but i'm not going to suggest it until they fix the game we need better animations we need a redo of the perks xp needs to be sorted add, add for god's sake add xp challenges to the game payday the heist had it payday 2 had side jobs which were terrible find something in the middle and fix the bloody game now this has gone way longer than I expected because it's a quick play but I just want to say thank you to Wally and Pete I'm not going to try and pronounce your name because I know I'm going to butcher it and you're going to correct me later but they both helped with getting the sound effects for the start of this which was cringy but I loved it anyway um, go fucking subscribe to them or something they deserve it besides that I've been so crackable thanks for watching my quick play and I will see you very soon for another video goodbye